from KBIA and the Reynolds Journalism Institute. On air and online, this is Intersection. Hello and welcome to Intersection, where people and ideas meet online and on KBIA. I'm Ryan from Mueller. For years now, the state of Missouri's infrastructure has been a concern for public officials, politicians, and Missourians on the whole. The Missouri Department of Transportation and state legislators have come up with a way to combat the department's shrinking budget, but it's up to Missouri voters to approve it. Amendment 7 will be on the August ballot. It's a three-quarter cent sales, statewide sales tax increase on everything except groceries and medicine. It's estimated to generate $534 million annually over the next 10 years, with all of the money to be spent on a wide variety of transportation purposes in the state. A draft of the project was released last week, and it includes widening I-70 to three lanes from Lee Summit to Winsville. But the issue isn't without controversy. Supporters and opponents alike are passionate about the proposal, and with only a couple months left before the issue goes to voters, there's a lot to talk about. Joining me in studio today to do so, Roberta Breaker is the Chief Financial Officer for the Missouri Department of Transportation. Roberta, thanks for being here. Thank you. Dave Sylvester is the Central District Engineer for the Missouri Department of Transportation. Dave, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Ryan. Joining us by Skype today, Amy Bluen is the Executive Director of the Missouri Budget Project. Amy, welcome to Intersection. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. And to start the show, we'll also be joined by two state legislators by phone, Senator Mike Kehoe of Jefferson City. Senator Kehoe, thanks for being with us. Good afternoon. Thank you. And also with us by phone is Senator John Lamping of the 24th District in St. Louis County. Senator Lamping, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right. And for you and our audience, we'd like to hear what you think about the sales tax increase proposal. Let us know by giving us a call at 573-882-8925 or email intersection at kbia.org. You could also tweet us at intersect kbia. Um, so I guess just to get started, uh, maybe a little bit of explaining on uh, what Amendment 7 is and just what your initial thoughts are. Um, we could just go around the group here. We do have a large group, but Roberta, we'll start with you, I suppose, on uh what, what's, why this is important and uh, what, why Missourians should care about this issue? It's important because it is a funding mechanism that can make a tremendous difference in transportation infrastructure and also transportation services in the state of Missouri. Over time, inflation and um, just the fact that the sale that the gas tax is the main way that transportation is funded, that's been flat for 20 years and inflation has really eaten away at the purchasing power of that funding source. So it's been something that's been on the mind of MoDOT and the legislature for a number of years. How do we really address that? And then this tax is different from the existing funding in that it can be used for any form of transportation. The existing funding is pretty much limited to either roads and bridges. This can be used for transit, air, rail, bike ped, ports, just about anything. Interesting. And uh, Senator Kehoe, uh, you, you sponsored this legislation. Why, why did it got this uh, on, approved to go to the ballot? Why did you sponsor this? Well, I was on the uh, Highway and Transportation Commission for several years before I ran for office. And I'm not one of those guys that wants to be a career politician. I knew there were funding problems out there. Most political people do not want to talk about funding problems and solutions to them because they're not politically popular. Uh, but I realize the problem does exist. Um, as Roberta said, we do have a decline in revenues and uh, the amount of money needed to take care of the road system in Missouri, which is the seventh largest, is currently 43rd in funding, just wasn't working. And there's a lot of ideas. I know Senator Lamping has ideas. And there's a couple other people uh, statewide who have some ideas for funding. This is one of them. And I think it's the right for Missourians to decide instead of a politician on how they fund transportation. Yeah, and it was kind of interesting how it all played out. I mean, it had the, the issue had bipartisan both support and opposition uh, to get to get passed. What kind of uh, conversations happened about this, and how did how did it work its way through the legislature? I guess. Well, it was introduced last year as a, a one cent uh, sales tax. The same as this year, it has a ten year sunset. It would have a defined list of projects that would guarantee voters as so that they would have peace of mind that there were no other ways to raise revenue, just so they would have protection from somebody doing it. So it freezes the gas cap and gas tax and eliminates the opportunity to toll roads. But it did not make it through last year, as you know. And this year, as the conversation went through, uh, one of the ways we tried to change up the conversation and move it so it would get through the legislature is we reduce it from one cent to three quarters of a cent. Uh, still not, um, did not get everybody's vote, to your point. There were Democrats, Republicans on both sides, both the yeses and nos. Uh, but about out of 193 legislators, 127 of them voted to send it to Missourians. 
and let them decide if this is the appropriate method to fund transportation. And, and Senator Lamping, you were one of the Republican no's, correct? Yeah, that's correct. You know, it's interesting. Um, uh, Mike, uh, Senator Kehoe is the, is the transportation chair. I served last year as his vice chair, and I think what there's complete agreement um, is in the need, in the liability, and MoDOT's done a tremendous job of positioning and creating an understanding of all the things that need to be done. Uh, and, the, and the disagreements really just came along the lines of, you know, um, the alternatives to increasing taxes in order to fund the transportation liability. Uh, I, had, I was a proponent of redirecting pre-existing revenues uh, to fund uh, the need. Um, the majority of legislators, as Mike suggested, dis- disagree with me, preferred this route to go to the ballot to raise sales taxes in the short run. The, um, as, you, as everyone's very much aware of the fact that uh, the Republicans plus one Democrat also chose to cut taxes beginning in 2017, I, I was a uh, a person who voted to cut taxes all by themselves, but I was very much in favor. I would have certainly foregone, foregone the tax cut if we had simply just redirected those revenues um, to the transportation needs. That, but that, at the end of the day, that wasn't an option. Um, we'll find out where the voters are uh, in, in a short period of time. Um, you know, Missouri right now, it's combined state and local sales tax. We rank 14th highest in the country uh, as combined state and local sales tax, and if this were to pass, we'd be the ninth highest in the country and the part of the state that I represent, uh, St. Louis City, St. Louis County, and, and I spent a lot of time in Jackson County, if this were to pass, that would put the combined state, uh, state and local sales taxes all north of 10%. Uh, it would put the sales tax in the St. Louis area as high as it is in San Francisco and in New York City. So um, <clears throat> I, I didn't even believe that we, would, we should fund this liability from existing revenues, and I think that uh, we've used the sales tax for far too many things and when we get north of 10% in a sales tax, that will have, especially on the two border sides of the states, it will have a, a negative impact. Uh, and so, therefore, I'm, I'm opposed to this uh, endeavor, but I do uh, realize the fact that we need to fix this liability. Yeah, And you alluded to a fact that Democratic Governor Jay Nixon uh, mentioned during in his opposition to this sales tax that, um, that we, we did have this income tax uh, decrease passed, and then we've also got I mean, the, the equation that is created here with all the action this legislative session. And, and Roberta, I wonder your thoughts on, on the governor's opposition to this and that rationale. The governor leads the state of Missouri. The governor needs to decide his position on this. And the legislature ha- has crafted the legislation. Ms. MoDOT's job is really to put together the project list, so that's mm-hmm. what we're focused on. Right. And I guess, um, same question, I guess, to, to you, Senator Kehoe and Lamping, uh, the governor's opposition. What does it do to the chances of this passing, I suppose? Well, his, his vote, he's expressed how he'll vote. And um, I would maintain that his vote is uh, no more uh, important or less important than yours and mine or any other Missourian. Um, the governor has tied this up into a very political conversation in that he believes that cutting sales taxes is going to be the Armageddon and thing that ruins Missouri, I think. Senator Lamping and I and many others all agree that when, it, when it's right and proper and it has the, the right fiduciary triggers and, and amounts in it for us to be able to give Missourians their money back when we can, that we should do that. And I think those are two conversations. The governor has combined them into one, and I don't believe they are the same conversation. You can do both. You can offer Missourians an opportunity if this is the right investment for transportation, and you can also um, pass a sales tax cut the first time we've changed tax policy in over 100 years in the state and let Missourians spend their money the best way they think they should. Yeah, no, I, I'm disappointed by the fact that you know, Mike and I have served together for these past four years, and in our time in the General Assembly, uh, the governor has never supported any concrete plan to fund the transportation liability. Mike, we had a, uh, we call it a twenty, it's a twenty million dollar, uh, excuse me, twenty billion dollar pothole that needs to be fixed in these next twenty years. And uh, in all of our time, uh, there was never a plan put forward. The plans all came from within the General Assembly. Mike sponsored the sales tax increase. I sponsored a bill that would permanently redirect existing sales and use taxes to fund transportation, and then other ideas were considered. But at no point did the executive choose to offer a concrete plan, which is, is very unfortunate. I think that the time for leadership um, on this issue is well past, and to the extent that uh, we have in the General Assembly have tried to take it up from a leadership position, it really does beg the question, why is it that the executive branch up until now, I mean, really, even though he's opposed to this idea, he has not yet to describe to any of us what he's for. 
I need to take a moment to remind our audience this is Intersection, a program of KBIA and the Reynolds Journalism Institute. I'm Ryan Fumioner, and today we're talking about the statewide three-quarter cent sales tax proposal on the August ballot that would go to fund transportation projects across the state for the next 10 years. Opponents and proponents are both passionate about the proposal, which would generate an estimated $5.4 billion. Joining me in studio today to, to do so, Roberta Breaker is the Chief Financial Officer for the Missouri Department of Transportation, and Dave Sylvester is the Central District Engineer for MoDOT. Joining us by Skype, Amy Bluens, the Executive Director of the Missouri Budget Project, and joining us by phone, two state senators, Senator Mike Kehoe of Jefferson City and Senator John Lamping of St. Louis. And for you and our audience, what are your thoughts on the proposed transportation tax? Are there any other ways to raise the money that MoDOT needs to maintain our roads? We'd like to hear what you think. Give us a call at 573-882-8925 or email intersection at kbia.org. You could also tweet us at Intersect KBIA. Um, a somewhat basic question about this. Do we know, do we have an idea of whether this will pass in August? Have there been any polls done? Uh, I'll open that to anyone who has an answer to that. <laughs> well, Ryan, I, I would just jump in there and say that, I, I, first of all, I do respect Senator Lamping understanding there is the need. He and I have a different idea on how to get there, and that's kind of the answer to your question, is that no matter what, thank God, Missouri has a Hancock Constitution, which means for the type of funding it takes to fund Missouri's transportation infrastructure, the voters will have to approve whatever the solution is. And so when you look at what voters will approve, that's where you have to get to the point that what will you put forward that has the best chance of passing. Uh, gas tax, uh, Missourians accept that less than 20 percent. Toll roads, they accept that in the middle of 30 and they seem to have accepted a sales tax in multiple polling, even one that was just done last week, a little over so if you're going to put a solution before the voters, you got to pick one that has somewhat of a chance of passing because if it doesn't pass on the next day, you'll still have 32,000 miles of roads, you'll still have 10,400 bridges, and you won't have made uh, Missouri's family uh, any safer on the road, and you won't have created any jobs. So you got to figure out something that, to your point, uh, has somewhat of a chance, even though it will be very difficult, uh, somewhat of a chance with Missouri voters. Right. And, uh, and, and, and Ryan, Lampy, uh, go ahead. And, I, and, uh, and if it ends up being the case that, uh, as Mike suggested, the sales tax doesn't pass, uh, then we're right back to where we were before. Um, the, the, the idea that I put forward would, would also be a constitutional amendment change that would actually redirect existing sales tax that was never given any serious consideration. Um, the majority had decided that they were going to pursue increasing sales tax. That would have to go to a vote of the people only in that we were changing the Constitution uh, it would, but it would not be a tax increase, and it was it, there was some consideration as to pulling that idea. But at the end of the day, we didn't. But the overwhelming consensus would be that Missourians would support that because it wouldn't require an additional increase in taxes. So I, I, I'm term, I, I'm leaving office this session. I won't be back next year. If the sales tax were to fail, um, then I, my hope would be is that we come back as soon as possible and make that constitutional change to redirect existing sales tax uh, to fund this liability. But um, so, you know, that's the, where we are right now is, uh, you know, we'll have a funding source in, in two months, so we won't. Right. And I'm going to have to let the two of you go on the phone here in a couple minutes, but I had one other quick question to ask you as we as continue the wonky part of this conversation, and that is that Governor Nixon did put this on the August ballot, had the option to put it either in August or November. I wonder what you think, what you think about that decision and what uh, it does to the chances of this passing. Well, look, John, John pointed it out very appropriately that the – governor said he is willing to engage in conversations about transportation funding. And my question would be, where has he been for the last five or six years? Because that's all the state and the stakeholders all around the state from St. Louis and Kansas City to Northwest and Southeast Missouri have been talking about is how do we fund transportation? And so it's apparent that he has decided to be against it and not only against it, to try to make sure he can do what he can to doom it to failure. Unfortunately for the governor, the polling suggests that that did not go down by moving it to the August ballot. It makes it a little bit more of a challenge to produce uh, uh, stakeholders and investment in campaigns and the things that you need to do to organize a campaign. But um, it's clear to me that he, he is a governor of no. He has no other ideas on this and many other issues. Um, and it's just a, it's one of the things he's using politics to try to keep himself looking good. Yeah, I was disappointed by that decision. It's clear the government has made a very clear position on the issue but I would have much preferred the November ballot where, you know, well, you'll, you have, you'll have 40 to, you know, you'll have a much higher uh, likelihood of turnout. I mean, you'll have 40, 50, 60 percent of people who actually vote in the November ballot. Um, this August date is probably 15 to 20 percent. And, you know, I would much 
rather have favored where a greater percentage of voters would have actually weighed in on the issue. So uh, I think the governor did it with the intent being that that would make it more difficult to pass in August. I would have preferred that it had um, a greater percentage of voters weigh in on the issue. Okay. Well, uh, Senator Mike Kehoe from Jefferson City and Senator uh, John Lamping from St. Louis County, we're going to have to let you guys both go right now. Thanks very much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Ron. Thank you, John. All right, great. Uh, so, uh, Amy, you've sat patiently through that. For, I, I wondered uh, your thoughts a little bit on uh, some of the things we've talked about there, the governor's opposition uh, to this to this uh, proposal and also just uh, the likelihood of this passing. Um, well, first of all, let me say that we at the Missouri Budget Project are not taking a position on the issue. We are not um, going to be for the transportation tax or opposed to it. Um, I do think that a couple of very important things were mentioned. Uh, one is that there is a clear demonstrated need for the tax. Um, we have seen that MoDOT's funding is going to be declined significantly over the next few years. Um, in fact, the research that I have shows that it, we're going to drop from $1.3 billion of funding in 2009 down to $325 million in uh, 2017. And that's the lowest level since 1992. Um, simultaneously, we've got a lot of roads that need some improvements. Uh, I drive on I-70 myself regularly, and I know that I would prefer to have I-70 expanded <laughs> um, because of my experience on that highway. But there is a question about whether or not Missourians um, support a sales tax increase to make this work. Um, you know, I think that the governor, one of the items that he was concerned with in his statement was that the sales tax is a regressive tax, um, meaning that it impacts lower income Missourians more than higher income. Missourians in terms of a percent of their income. Um, so that's a that's a real concern and a valid point. Sure. I need to take a moment to remind our audience this is Intersection, a program of KBIA and the Reynolds Journalism Institute. I'm Ryan Fumulner, and today we're talking about the statewide three-quarter cent sales tax proposal on the August ballot that would go to fund transportation projects across the state for the next 10 years. Opponents and proponents are both passionate about the proposal, which would generate an estimated $5.4 billion dollars. Joining me in studio today to do so, Roberta Breaker is the Chief Financial Officer for the Missouri Department of Transportation, and Dave Sylvester is the Central District Engineer for MoDOT. Joining us by Skype, Amy Bluins, the Executive Director of the Missouri Budget Project, and joining us by phone were two state senators, Senator Mike Kehoe and Senator John Lamping. Thanks to them again for joining us. We'd also love to hear from you in our audience. What road problems have you noticed in mid-Missouri? What areas do you think need the most improvement? Share your thoughts. Give us a call at 573-882-8925 or email intersection at kbia.org. You could also tweet us at Intersect KBIA. We would like to remind you, you can watch Intersection as streaming video online during our live conversations every Monday afternoon at 2 at KBIA.org. You can watch that video and join our online chat by going to KBIA.org and scrolling down to the link for Intersection. Again, that's Mondays at 2 online at KBIA.org. And so, uh, Dave, I wonder, um, we talked a little bit about um, some of the some of the, the budget concerns, right? And what, what does that look like on the ground level as the, what kind of projects are we currently able to work on given the budget situation now? And again, things look like they're going to be more dire in the future. But. Well, as Roberta talked about the funding that we have right now, uh, and as Amy just kind of pointed out and what we're looking forward, it really challenges uh, us and our districts. We're a seven district entity in the, for transportation. It really challenges us to do projects beyond just taking care of the system. You heard the Senator, Senator Kehoe refer to uh, 33,000 miles of road and 10,400 bridges. Uh, and that's, that's all across the state. Um, and, and that's a significant thing. That's not just maintaining the roads. It's maintaining the shoulders. It's cutting the grass. It's making sure the signs are bright and readable. It's making sure stripes are on the road. Uh, and those are some of the maintenance parts of it. Now, then you get into maybe doing some safety things like adding rumble strips uh, and then in, and putting up additional signs where we may not have signs to improve perhaps a curve or some things. Resurfacing roads is, is always a thing to keep them smooth and safe. Uh, and that's, that's a safety improvement, but just to resurface the roads. Um, and, and it's a struggle to do that. We have to identify those roads that, that uh, need it the most uh, and, and they can do that. And, and we do that with the help of uh, planning partners that we have around our area. And, and we're in constant contact with um, agencies like the uh, uh, Columbia Area Transportation Study Organization uh, here in Columbia or the Capital Area um, 
Metropolitan Planning Organization. Those, those groups help us with uh, the projects that they would like to see and what their priorities are. And so we can take those with the money that we have and working with our other partners and figure out, you know, what, what can we do that provides uh, our biggest safety, uh, addresses our biggest safety issues. Mm -hmm. um, we, we would like to do things that will help us in economic development, and if we can do those and work them into a project, by all means, that's, that's a definitely a factor that we want to put in. Um, but maintaining the system that we have with the money we have uh, is is the biggest challenge that we have um, from my standpoint and the folks that work with me. Sure. And, and what happens if this doesn't pass? I mean, they, they, we mentioned we're back to square one, but this is, you know, there was a year of work put into this, uh, this, this uh, tax increase, right? So what happens if this doesn't pass? And obviously it leaves in a modern tough situation. Well, we right. talk to our employees a lot about focusing on what you can do with what you have. Mm -hmm. So we maintain the roads and bridges in the condition, the best condition we can for as long as we can. We focus on safety every opportunity we get, and we make sure that we provide the best customer service that we can. Um, one of the things that has not been discussed, but that is looming out there, is our ability to match federal funds. Mm -hmm. So Missouri and all the United States when you pay at the pump, you pay 18.4 cents of a federal gas tax. And to get that back, we provide $1 of match to get back $4 of federal funds. And we're looking at probably 2019 or 2020 where we can't match federal funds anymore, which means that amount of money that really Missourians are paying for will be lost. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we use to fund the construction program. Yeah, and we have a, a tweet from Kristen in the audience who, who asks, why sales tax, why not a fuel tax? We have some of the lowest gas prices in the country consistently. Um, again, of all the options, why, why, I guess part of that's why sales tax. But um, Well, Senator Kehoe addressed that uh, in the discussions that the legislature has, and this has been a discussion that's been going on for a long time. We had a blue ribbon panel that was established by the legislature and went around the state two years ago, and... What, um, the, what we heard as through that, what the legislature heard through that, and then Senator Kehoe even referred to some polling that shows that people are overwhelmingly against that concept of increasing the uh, fuel tax. But it, it is a mechanism that's available. Mm -hmm. Again, it's something that the people would have to vote on. Right. And, and Amy, I wonder your thoughts on, on that part of the discussion as well. I, again, Tristan's cheat, why sales tax, why not a fuel tax? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we weren't engaged in all of the conversations sure. that the commission had or that MoDOT had on this. But, um, you know, I do believe that there is a decline in the fuel tax um, that's going to continue to decline, even if it was increased um, because of more efficient vehicles being used and manufactured for use. So over time, the fuel tax is going to be a dwindling source of revenue, and you do have to look for other options. Um, whether you know, whether a sales tax is the best option, I think is still up for uh, discussion in the, the vote, but there is a clear demonstrated need for the roads and uh, there's a clear uh, demonstrated uh, reasoning behind why they chose the sales tax. And I'm going to say the T word. What about the idea of a toll road, right? I mean, that that's another possibility that that's available, right? That other states have taken, taken uh, like what, what I'm guessing that doesn't pull very well. Um, um, as I recall, no, it doesn't pull very well. <laughs> it was also the subject of um, a, a legislative bill two years ago, though, mm -hmm. the concept of tolling I-70. And a lot of folks in the Midwest have the kind of the, the model of driving up and throwing coins in a, in a basket and so much tolling is now done electronically. Mm -hmm. And that was really the model that we envisioned, but it it was a non-starter in the legislature. And is that the mechanism that would, would voters still have to approve that, or is that something that could happen without voter approval? We actually believe that the legislature could approve that, but they did not. Right. Okay. And so, yeah, that's still, again, just one of the options that's out there if this doesn't pass, I suppose. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess an another thing to talk about briefly, before we'll have to go to the break here in a moment, but uh, MoDOT has released the priority list or a draft of the priority list. Mm -hmm. um, can you explain what that is and I guess what the process is going to be, uh, Dave? Dave? Dave would be better. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I talked a little bit earlier about the, the par planning partners that we work with. And there are five organizations um, that uh, for the central area of the state, 
and every district has a number of groups that they work with, uh, planning groups that they work with. And uh, so these, these are projects that aren't, for the most part, unknown to us. Um, we, we pretty much know what's on the minds of the communities, what they would like. And again, it's a matter of working with funds that are available to do those. Uh, and, uh, and of recent, as Amy pointed out, the, the, the $1.3 budget, billion dollar construction budget down to $700 million now and, and future to three hundred twenty-five really challenges us to pick the best projects. So we, we asked our planning folks to help us come together and pick pick what what are the big priorities that um, we, we would do if this three-quarter cent sales tax passed. Uh, and, and we really relied on them to do the, the bulk of the work. And they, they came together uh, in all the parts of the state on different meetings, and they put these lists together on what, what it is in the communities, whether it's a big job, uh, like we talked about at I-70, um, maybe it's maybe it's uh, something about four laning Route 50 to finish that up, or maybe it's something like adding shoulders to a, a Route B type of a road or something like that. Maybe it's enhancing transit in an area because these funds can be used for any mode of transportation, and uh, and that's that's what we did, and and we spent a uh, um, couple of day a couple of long days uh, putting our list together. And uh, that, that's what we have available on our website right now. We want people to go look at it. Mm -hmm. We want them to give us comments and feedback on it. Uh, I'm confident that uh, the list that is out there uh, will have some minor changes to it based on the feedback we get back. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's just natural when you ask for feedback that you're going to get good stuff, um, good responses to, from people that, um, that are engaged in transportation and want to be a part of it. Well, and it'll be used as the basis of a, as some public meetings coming up. And in fact, we have one Columbia today, right? Absolutely. Tonight at the uh, Arc Center here in Columbia, Missouri, uh, we are we have an open public meeting from four to seven p.m. We'll have a number of MoDOT folks there uh, to talk about the li the jobs that are on the list and and uh, make that available. We'll have public comment forms available. And uh, they can come by and ask any questions that they'd like on, on everything that we have on our list. So, I think it's breath. important, too, Ryan, that this effort actually comes on the heels of another effort. Last year, we were out conducting um, the work necessary to put together a new long-range plan, which is required by the Federal Highway Administration as a condition to receiving federal funds. And that was a really huge effort. We visited every single county in the state. We um, held public meetings. We had uh, project lists as part of that. And the point was that in, at the end of that, we had a $20 billion project list over the next 20 years. So the efforts that we've been using at the district level for the last few weeks have been taking that really huge list and saying, okay, you, we don't have all that money. What are your highest priorities for the amount of money that this tax would produce? And so it's been in an exercise in culling a much larger list. It hasn't been, oh my gosh, we have to go out and start from scratch. Right, right. Well, we're going to have to take a quick break. This is Intersection, a program of KBIA and the Reynolds Journalism Institute. Today we're talking about the statewide three-quarter cent sales tax proposal on the August ballot that would fund transportation projects across the state for the next 10 years. Joining me in studio are Roberta Breaker, Dave Sylvester, and by Skype, Amy Bluen is joining us. I'm Ryan Famuliner. We'll be right back after a short break.